So today it's just Alberto and me. Uh, yeah, we've we've been up to a bunch of things uh, in the meantime, in the last, uh, I think, four months since we've done this. Uh, I still have the same job, but Alberto has a new job. Where are you now? Yep, now look, I, I'm now moved to Washington, D.C. I'm now working um, with the Smithsonian, awesome. which is pretty cool. Um, Congrats. So, yeah, lots of changes. And and you, you've been also pretty busy. What, what, what have uh, you been well, up to? Well, I had um, a field expedition uh, just before the summer in, in June this year. Uh, and um, we, so we've been in, in the southwest, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas to, uh, to do our collection. And w I work with jumping spiders, which uh, live down in that area, which are these tiny spiders that get really colorful. They see really well, and that's why we're studying them. And so uh, once a year, we have to go and actually collect that, those That's guys. pretty cool. And, and you did like a sort of like... Um documentary yeah it, that's right? maybe a bit highfalutin to call it a, a documentary but uh <laughs> i did um a sort of video diary while i was down there so the uh, the trip took four weeks and uh yeah it took us through like four and a half thousand miles i think we put on our rental car and um we were in lots of different locations and uh, i wanted to uh, produce some videos as we were down in the field uh, to show to people uh, what we're doing like more or less not maybe not live, but like uh, pretty while we're still out in the field. Um, That's nice, uh, and 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 this is already published on YouTube, yes. correct? Yes. So this trip was in like uh, from mid May to mid June uh, this year, and we've uploaded uh, uh, about one episode a week as we were down there, and uh, this was um, actually um, the consequence of um, a crowdfunding campaign we ran last year uh, where we promised to uh, to do exactly that which is to put out this kind of field video diary to the people who had uh, given us money to do that expedition cool i mean so what gear did you take i mean because this might be pretty useful if anyone wants to try this on their own i don't know create a video di diary or sort of documentary uh, i think uh, people might want to know i guess all the gear you had and and i don't know maybe some uh you could give all some right. pointers I okay guess. yeah maybe i should give the disclaimer that i wouldn't describe myself like as a professional videographer by any means uh i'm <laughs> uh yeah i'm a scientist with like an interest in in video mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. and i do some of some video just uh, uh because i do animal behavior research and you have to you know record animals behaving so uh, you, you pick up a thing or two here and there so um so this, uh, for, for those who haven't seen any of these videos, it was usually a, dis uh, a video of the animals in their natural habitat, which is macro video. And it was uh, us kind of goofing around in the field and uh, or, you know, someone standing there and talking to the camera about what we're doing. Um, so I took uh, two cameras with me. Uh, that was uh, one that had a macro lens for the uh, animal shots and one that had a wide lens on it um, to like a short zoom with image stabilization to do landscape, to do um, these uh, talking head shots. And uh, a tripod to just, you know, to be able to just stand in front of the camera. Uh, a, uh, a shotgun microphone, like a it's actually kind of a cool uh, uh, bargain item that we, we like around here. It's the Tagstar. Um, I don't know the serial number, but uh, it's uh, it's cost 30 bucks and it's been really useful to get good audio nice. out of um, in these field situations, even despite wind. Uh, there was even a, like that's, I think, one of the thing uh, things that's a really good amateur tip uh, to make your videos uh, seem more professional is to just have good audio. And it doesn't cost a lot, but if you don't put any external microphone either on the person talking or on your camera, then it's, unless they stand right next to the camera, it's going to sound bad. And um, that really helps. 30 bucks, can't go wrong with that thing. Uh, then, um, yeah, uh, I already talked in an older episode about the backpack that I've been using. So that was kind of a a gear packing challenge to have all of my collecting gear, all of my scientific like measuring devices and two cameras and microphones and all that with me all the time. But there are, uh, which I follow yeah. your recommendation. I also bought an F stop bag. Not that I need it much yeah, convincing, yeah, but I, I have one now nice and it's bag. pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah so and I know <laughs> anything like that will do, I think. Um, yeah, and so what I what I did is uh, basically, yeah, I used I took the two cameras with me. I had them uh, on my 
uh, on my person most of the time just at my like clipped to my belt with these nifty things that I thought were maybe a little bit too expensive for what what they're uh, meant for like uh, I thought that before I actually used them I thought it was kind of one of those purchases where you just like get carried away with like spending money on cool gadgets but uh, so this yeah. is a uh, <laughs> what's it called peak design capture clip Pe yeah and uh, I got two of those so I could kind of have uh, one camera left one camera right on uh, on my right side on my belt uh, it was, yeah, it was like really appropriate because like we were like in the Texan <laughs> desert with, uh, yeah, like guns, gunslinging cameras and shooting spiders and stuff. But um, so these were really useful because that would mean I could actually do my job, which was trying to find uh, the animals uh, while still having a camera at hand. So, uh, so I was just you know looking at the ground, and when I saw one, and I felt like okay, I've collected enough of those, I can risk uh, one getting away as I'm trying to shoot video of it, and uh, and then just whip out the camera and just basically pounce on it and try to get video without being too shaky. And um, that's cool. Yeah. So so it helped to have two cameras there for the people and landscape shots and for the animal shots. And and yeah, so I uh, edited that stuff uh, on a laptop that I brought. Uh, at, at Starbucks usually because uh, there was electricity and Wi-Fi and I did that in <laughs> Adobe Premiere because I have a subscription for Creative Cloud but you could do that in anything Any... really. What uh, laptop so did you MacBook use? MacBook Pro 15 inch you know the beefy one that I use for everything but again it's um, you don't necessarily need something super fancy. Yeah. And and you and you did all your recordings on 4K or well, was it uh, 1080 So I brought two Panasonic cameras, so they're micro four thirds cameras, so they're a bit smaller, uh, which also helps with clipping them to your belt. And only one of them, the GH4, is capable of 4K recording, which uh, I used whenever that was available. Yeah, and for the macro shots of uh, of the small little spiders. Uh, I really love using 4K because that allows you to further crop in. It uh, it gives you some some leeway for image like uh, uh, post image stabilization by cropping again. Uh, that that's really cool. Really really loving that. Great. So now 4K might be turning into something pretty uh, good feature that more people that are into wildlife photography are going to be yeah. looking for. 4K is amazing. Like especially uh, the option that you can just take. Uh, single frames from a 4k video and use them essentially as as a um yeah as a photograph it's like basically an eight megapixel photo um and that is for anything on the web that's usually fine unless you're like zooming in uh, too far and that means you can just point mm -hmm. your camera at a fast moving animal and uh and then just like go through frame by frame until you have the one frame that's like in focus and with the animal not moving and then just pull that out and you look like an amazing photographer so at least when someone's looking at it on the web and not like <laughs> on a high resolution mm -hmm. screen. But uh, yeah, no, that was, that was really good. And again, and, and so, and why do you think it's so important for more scientists to do this, these sort of things mm -hmm. that you did with um, your video and your research? Well, I think, I mean, there are lots of reasons and uh, it kind of depends on the type of research that you do, but I think uh, pretty much anyone uh, who is in science does something that they're really enthusiastic about. I mean, to be honest, like no one who isn't enthusiastic about this stuff is in science because why would you do it if you're not? Like, <laughs> it's not like you get rich doing this. And um, mm -hmm. so I think just telling a story to the public uh, is, uh, is really valuable because, you know, they're the people who fund our research in the end uh, through, uh, you know, federal funding and or whatever um and um it is uh it's i don't know i think it's it's been a great vehicle to get people exposed to what we're actually doing and uh just you can you know show these as uh you know to your friends and family so they understand what you're doing if you're a scientist which is not like a given and um and then yeah i used it to communicate with uh our backers in that crowdfunding campaign um, if you're, yeah, it's just a just tremendously powerful outreach tool, I think, to have a video that describes your research. And uh, I mean, I can hear people saying like, oh, yeah, but I'm not doing anything that's like with flashy, cool animals or like out in like some cool natural setting. So 
uh, you can do that in your lab like if you just tell a story and um, you know uh, do some uh, there's some basic tricks you can do to get good looking video out of any situation and uh, there are lots of tutorials in YouTube uh, to go to that maybe we'll link to a few uh, but you yeah, know it's I think it's just generally good it takes some time but it's also a, a good skill to learn I think yeah. Great. Well, oh, maybe one well, thing I should awesome. say, like, so the, the equipment I've been using is, uh, is kind of prosumer. Um, so it's not like full professional grade stuff. I mean, I mean, you could argue about the GH4 and the lenses that I've used, but, um, uh, it's still kind of, it's probably too expensive for someone to just buy out of fun just to do like a one-off video or so. But I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the type of video that I've been doing, you could do with significantly cheaper equipment, especially if you have a modern smartphone. Uh, then you can use like lots of smartphones nowadays, like uh, shoot video that is really good enough for this purpose, like especially the wide, the wide shots. It's always good to have. Yeah, the new iPhone does 4K now. Oh yeah, that's crazy. You don't even need that. So I had, uh, I had this thing. So this is the the one before the iPhone 6 Plus. I had that with me on the trip with this little uh, hand grip that uh, that actually gives you really nice looking uh, shake free video and uh, that's also not expensive these kinds of hand grips um, that can help um, and uh, as long as you have good audio uh, I think that that helps again um, there is a workaround where you if you don't have a shotgun mic if you use uh, these kinds of uh, earbud microphones they surprisingly usually have a good audio quality and uh, you can you can buy a cheap one of those for 12 bucks on on Amazon um, and uh, kind of glue a um, alligator clip to it and use it as kind of a lapel microphone recording to your phone um, uh, on like a voice no uh, notes app or whatever you use and that usually really helps and you can then later put that together with the video that you shot in your editing uh, software of choice, which can also be something cheap like iMovie or so, which is totally fine for this. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think those are all great pointers. I think I hope people go. I mean, we we should definitely put a link and a list of all the gear you took. Yeah. Um. So I guess people could at least have a base and and work from there and see what things they can get or 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 maybe substitute. And we'll put the links for to your videos too because I they, I, I saw them and they were really great and and um, I guess you set a bar for everyone. <laughs> well, I can't <laughs> and, wait what you and... guys produce. I mean, it's <laughs> I guess the, the I don't balls know. in I'm your court now. I'm not good at videos, so I do I do I, I did recently purchase a GoPro, so let's see. I don't have an excuse. Maybe yeah. I will start doing some more stuff in the field, but. But I think it's a good starting point, and I hope um, this video will be useful for everyone. So yeah, I hope so too. I mean, awesome. this was like really the the fast run through. Uh, but if uh, if anyone has any questions about this kind of um, you know science perspective, like outreach video production or so, I'd be more than happy to answer anything. So uh, just either um, yeah put a comment uh, under this video or uh, reach out to us on Twitter on at uh, Critersnap, and um, I think that's it. So. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Alberto. All right. All right. See you guys. See you later. Bye.